You good up there, boss man? Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good to see you again, man. Turn my phone on. Do not disturb. I just oh yeah. To do that a couple uh, days ago. So. <laughs> Technology and knowledge is great. great. Um, hey, talk to me about the path uh, to get here. We did, we talked about it a little bit yesterday, but but uh, in terms of the three guys you will have faced after after Saturday, do you feel like you're facing the toughest guy Saturday night, or do you feel like your your bigger tests were were in the first two? Um, no, I feel like this is the biggest test. Um, just because of, I wouldn't have said that in the beginning of the tournament. Um, I don't think a lot of people thought that Apache would be, uh, Horiguchi. Um, but given, you know, uh, his last couple wins, Apache is definitely the toughest opponent. This is definitely the two best bantamweights in the world. Um, yeah. Uh, and I stand behind that. When you look at, at his game and, and, how first of all, how deeply do you look at it, or is that something that the coaches do? Like, are you a film guy? Yeah, I'm a film. I do all my stuff myself. Okay. Um, I understand the game very well myself. Um, I was uh, brought up to like under or to have a, a high fight IQ. So, um, all my analysis, you know, I also take analysis from my coaches, and you know, we kind of coordinate on uh, what we think, you know, um, together as a group, but I, I do a lot of studying on my own, you know? Um, and, uh, like when I look at Patchy, you know, I, I see a, a, a highly skilled grappler, you know, I see somebody who's improving. Um, I see somebody who's kind of changed their way of life, uh, sounds like, and, um, you know, and I'm taken to account, um, for that, but it's also, um, I'm, I'm hella confident in what I can do and what I'm uh, capable of. And um, I have no doubt that I'll be the Grand Prix champion by the end of this. Um, have you talked to Sergio about the the Pitbull situation? Um, no, I didn't talk to him. Uh, I knew that they were going to fight before it was announced. Okay. Uh, not like we haven't talked uh, kind of exclusively about, you know, uh, what's the name? I'll see him on Fortnite every now and then or whatever, but we haven't like talked, you know, about that situation. Um, what do you think of Pitbull moving down. I mean, is, is this a smart move for him? Is he, do you think he's going to struggle making the weight? Um, I think, I mean, he's not a big, big guy. Uh, so hopefully he makes a good move to, uh, 35. You know, I think this is just super exciting for the Bantamweight division. I feel like that, you know, um, granted I beat this or I win this fight, um, on Saturday, I have a chance to fight somebody who's going to be the Bellator GOAT, you know, one of the best in MMA. So this super exciting. I couldn't be happier. Like, I'm excited that he's he's making that step. He's he's also, you know, on the cusp of something great, which nobody in, in martial arts has done, you know, three weight classes champion. You know, you hear people talk about it, but nobody has done it, you know. So um, and he's on the cusp of that. So that's that's just an amazing feat for a lifetime. You know, that's a uh, uh, he'll be remembered forever, you know, if he accomplishes that. So for him to come down and me to have the opportunity to um, face somebody like that is is crazy. But if you look on the other hand, too, Sergio has a chance to beat somebody who's done the unthinkable, you know, and then coming back off of an injury and doing it. So I think it's an amazing fight. I'm I'm super happy this was made. I feel like it's an extension of a tournament that just makes the Bantamweight division that much sp more spotlighted and um, my position. And um, yeah, I'm super excited. I can't wait to watch it. Provided you win on Saturday, which I obviously you're planning to do mm -hmm. it, that fight does extend when you would be able to get back in there by what, at least two months. Right. So does that bother you at all? Or is the plan, Hey, whatever, man, I'm going to have a million bucks. So I can yeah. chill for a couple extra, you know? Um, and I was thinking about the landscape of when I was um, going to be fighting, you know, this tournament has, it's been a year. It's been a year since um, it started. And um, yeah, at the end of it, I'll have a million dollars. And um, as everyone knows, I don't like, I'm not necessarily eager to fight um, Sergio. So um, I figured also that Sergio, you know, wanted to get back in the reins because he has been out for a year. You know, I'm, I'm sure, you know, he would be itching to get back. So I would, I'll probably not have a long uh, layoff after, but this gives me a chance to enjoy the million dollars in the bank, you know, get a nice large size popcorn and watch this amazing fight. Um, and I have a little time, you know, I have a little time to reflect and to um, take some time with my family and enjoy 
the uh, fruits of my labor, you know, um, it's, it's been a long road for me, you know, um, I'm somebody who had to scratch and climb to get in this position. You know, I'm, I'm not somebody who had, uh, this amazing hype or this, um, you know, uh, highly storied, you know, highlight reel of, uh, fights where people would just, you know, um, yeah, just hankering or, you know, just, um, yeah, wanting to see me. So I've had to scratch and climb, um, to the top of the division, you know, now I'm one of the best, you know, in the division. Uh, well, I, I feel like I've been one of the best, but now I'm getting recognized for being one of the best uh, in the world. So um, I'm going to enjoy that, you know, for a, a month or so and then, you know, get back right back to it. But um, I am in I, I, I'm happy that, you know, this fight is happening. So, you know, I'll get some time. And there's one last quick one about that. Do you, is there any concern that you have for Sergio that he has had such a long layoff and his time back is against, like, like you said, like the number one guy in, in Bellator history. Yeah, I mean, that's that, a tough test. I think that's what makes this fight or that fight, you know, interesting because we get to see how Sergio bounces back after a, a pretty serious injury, you know, um, and then we also get to see how pa uh, Patricio Pitbull, you know, uh, how he cuts weight and how he deals with that, you know. So, um, I, yeah, this this fight is is interesting on on multiple different levels. So, um, yeah, that Sergio coming back is is one. Rafian, let me just ask you something. I'm, I remember interviewing you, Bellator 236. I believe that was your first fight with the promotion. You, you fought Shaden on, on that one. Yeah. And, man, even then, I, I don't even know if you're on the main card, but you just felt like, you know, championship level, the, the, the confidence and, and the way you speak. Back even before you won that D2 national title wrestling, if we were to visit you on the wrestling mats, was that always kind of your personality? Do you always see yourself on these big stages coming up? You know, I feel like I will myself to these big stages mentally, you know, um, the, the way I train, the way I prepare, the way I think about myself is um, championship level and um, nothing, um, nothing that I do. You know, I, I say this, I say um, uh, how you do one thing is how you do everything. So I, I try to do everything, you know, at, to the best of my ability. And um, I, I have a high kind of respect for holding myself to a high standard. Um so, yeah, anything I do, you know, I, I, I put my best foot forward and I attack it, you know, full force. And I, you know, I, yeah, and, and, that's, and, and it starts with my thinking, you know, how I think and how I, how I go about it. I, and I remember saying it was on the main card of uh, Bellator's, my, my Bellator debut. And um, I remember saying, like, you know, I, I think this is the start of something great. And I will be, you know, um, champion of this division. I will be a force. And, um, you know, I, I feel like I've just willed that into existence. Yeah, well, you've been fulfilling your promise every step of the way, even with the obstacles that comes with life, comes with this game, as you well know. And you don't necessarily have to give us the timeline as far as your training situations, but Patchy Mix was up here recently, and he did kind of bring that up as, a, as far as a parallel with your guys' training rooms. Can you speak about your preparation on this fight? I've seen that you obviously you're no stranger to traveling, making it to high-level talents and coaches to train with them. How is that piece work working for your personality? Do you prefer it this way? What's that like? Yeah. Um, well, just because of the situation, you know, um, I started at Rufus Sport and, um, you know, I've had to uh, fight Sergio, but um, more it was more like a life decision. We had a second kid. So, you know, I moved to Houston, which was a blessing uh, for us as a family because I have family there that help, can help with kids, you know, so I can put more time into mixed martial arts. Um, and then and then the Sergio fight um, happened. Um, so then I had to kind of move camps and then I went to um, Extreme Couture um, and, you know, I've just kind of been rolling with the punches because, again, I'm like I, I do a lot of my I do a lot of the things that I need to do on my own because I kind of uh, I've watched a lot of great fighters um, before me and um, I have a good game plan and, and the coaches that I've been able to come up um, with um, Jens Pover, Pat Militich. Uh, Duke Rufus, uh, Tyron Woodley, uh, Anthony Pettis, just I've, I've had a lot of good knowledge, you know, and so now I can recognize, you know, high level thinking, high level coaches. Um, and and so now just I'm, I end up I ended up back home, you know, and now I'm training with Eve Edwards, um, who's another Bellator or, or who's another MMA uh, goat. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I've, and it's, it, it, I don't want to say it's like something that I do, but uh, great people seem to gravitate me. I'm like blessed uh, that I be I'm able to like work with the people that I'm able to work with. Uh, Eric Nixick as well. Um, 
yeah, and the, the great minds that I'm able to work with is, is just like a, a blessing. I can't really say that I do that. I'm just like, I'm blessed. Sure. Last one for me. Uh, obviously, I'm familiar with uh, Eric Nixick, but uh, as a Southpaw, my favorite Southpaw is Eve Edwards. And relevant to this matchup at hand, yeah. you yourself were a Southpaw. We know about your wrestling, but when I watch your fights, like, man, this guy's got good Southpaw striking coming forward or off the counter. Yep. Some Southpaws absolutely hate facing other Southpaws. I know Patchy's game is wrestling and back takes is, yep. is a strong part of his game. Not the only thing he's good at. That's probably his priority, but... What's your opinion on the Southpaw versus Southpaw hey, match? Don't be telling my secrets, man. You giving away all the uh, secrets. Yeah, I got the Southpaw great. Eve was in the corner. And he was able to give me a lot of good techniques, you know. Um, yeah, uh, my game, uh, or what was the question? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, uh, Southpaw versus Southpaw. I've been, I've been lucky uh, in that regard, too, because um, I've, I kind of came up with a lot of Southpaw. I actually came up with a lot of black Southpaws, <laughs> which is crazy. Um, Jordan Griffin, uh, Jay Preston, it's a couple other uh, from um, Rufus Sport. And um, yeah, and now I'm working with Eve Edwards, who's who's another Southpaw. So um, I'm well-versed, you know. I, I don't know how many Southpaws I've faced, but I've always done well. Um, I think Cass Bell was a Southpaw um, and a tall Southpaw. Um, so yeah, I... I, I just understand. Um, I understand the uh, the, uh, the relationship, you know. Um, like I said, like I'm. I don't want to like give away, you know, everything that I know, but I I study and you know I study this game and I study like, um, you know, uh, why people switch stances, where when people st switch stances, and um and, and just the positions we in the 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 offensive opportunities and defensive opportunities I'm I'm just well aware of Jen that's 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 partly from me and partly from my the coaching I've been able to have also a southpaw my bad I forgot just Pover just Pover was the one who started me in MMA he's a southpaw so yeah hey Stotts K Williams for Ken Chronicles Media man let's be honest you've been able to show and prove throughout your whole career even with you being vocal, you always step up to the stage, you know, in the big fights, man. And I feel as though um, you beating Sabatello in the last match after all the hoopla and you really stood your ground and you really did your thing. Um, do you feel as though there's some added pressure for you to continue to win, being that you're so vocal? Um, You know what? I, I And that's that's the part I like about it, you know? I feel like the more chips I put out, you know, the more I have to defend and I'm I like I appreciate that, you know, um, I want something. I want to be able to lose something, you know, I want it. I want it to be like, hey, man, you was talking a lot. So now if you if 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 you don't if you don't uh, live up to what you say, you're going to have some backlash. Like I want that possibility, you know, because I, on the opposite end, I'm giving that backlash. Like I see Tapatello in the uh, airport and I'm giving him <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I'm, I, I'm able to say whatever the fuck I want to say, you know, because you can't say nothing. So, uh, yeah, I like that. You know, that's part of the game. And I'm I'm more than I'm more than happy about that. And also, how comfortable you are you in the Bantamweights to where you see yourself eventually becoming the spearhead of the Bantamweights? Um, I think I think I'm well on my way to becoming that, you know, um, I think I, I say this all the time, you know, I, I feel like I'm the best in the world, you know, um, and that's not. I feel like the world, it takes the world some time to catch up, but um, uh, I've always felt like I was the best in the world, you know, um, from when I started. And that's just because, you know, th the way I train, you know, who I train with, how I train, um, how I perform, um, I feel like I'm the best in the world. So whether the, w the world catches up now or it catches up later, you know, I'll be the spear spearhead um, eventually in, in the, in the people's eyes or in the eyes of uh, mainstream media. But like, I've, I've been knowing that I've, I've been the best for a long time. Any last minute words to Apache mix? Uh, just be ready, man, to fight, bro. Cause I'm coming out there to take your head off. Uh, you know, I'm coming out there to punch you in your mouth. You know, I talk a lot of shit, you know, but I back that goddamn shit up and I'm, I'm wet. Come tr take some shit from me, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm ready for it. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Raphael. Thanks, man.